a woodpecker was doing the woodpecker thing somewhere. Cluck, 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 cluck. She scanned the branches of the trees for a sign of the bird but found none. Cluck, 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 cluck. Persistent fives, Bet said, counting the clocks. She looked at the exterior of the house, happy she didn't see the bird damaging the siding by digging for insects. Then came again, cluck, 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 cluck. The sound was coming from over the fence, from Paula Garris' backyard. The tall fence, which even on Green Street made for good neighbors, blocked any view of next door, save the higher tree branches. There were no signs of Mr. Peckerhead up in them, but the cluck, 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 cluck sounds kept coming, which made Bet curious. She wanted to see how big this woody bird was, so she moved her chair to the fence and stood on it, hoping to see the bird in action. Cluck, 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 cluck. Paul Agaris kept his backyard neat and organized, with a vegetable garden with drip irrigation and bean poles. An antique plow, rusted and in need of a horse, sat in the center of a patch of grass beside, incongruously, an array of solar panels. Toward the back of the yard, distant from the patio, was a massive brick barbecue and one of those freestanding mail-order catalog hammocks. Cluck, 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 cluck. Paul himself was sitting at a picnic table on a redwood deck under a sloping canopy, already dressed in his uniform of baggy shorts, polo shirt, and those flip-flops. His two cool eyeglasses were set up on the top of his head, and he was bent in concentration over a hunk of machinery that looked like it had been made in the 1800s. Cluck, 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 cluck. The machine was a typewriter, though it looked like no typewriter Bet had ever seen. The thing was ancient, something out of the Victorian era, a mechanical printing apparatus with hammers arcing onto paper rolled into the carriage. Paul hit a key five times. Cluck, 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 cluck added a touch of oil to the inner levers of the typewriter, and repeated. Cluck, 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 cluck. This was how Paula Garris could ruin a peaceful morning on Green Street, servicing a writing gimcrack straight out of Jules Verne. Cluck, 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 cluck. Yowza, Bet mumbled. She went back inside for another jolt of caffeine and stayed there reading her iPad in the relative quiet at her kitchen table, still hearing the muffled clocking of her neighbor's ironclad word processor. That afternoon, when the sun was turning Green Street into both the frying pan and the fire, Bet was on the phone with Maggie. So he's got telescopes and typewriters laying around his house. I wonder what else, Maggie wondered. Old toasters, dial telephones, Wash tubs with ringers, who knows? I checked some of the dating sites on the web, couldn't find them. Creepyneighbor.com, sad sacks for you. Bet was looking out the front window when an unfamiliar car pulled up across the street. One made in Korea, the color of red nail polish. A young man, the driver, got out along with a girl a few years younger, no doubt his sister. As they walked across the street, angling toward Paul Lagaris's front door, Bet recognized the Lagaris gate in the boy. Kid alert, Bet told Maggie. Guess who just showed up? Who? Maggie asked. Pretty sure it's the offspring of Professor Lonesome next door, son and daughter. They showing tattoos or Birkenstocks? Nah. Bet eyed the kids for signs of youthful rebellion or oddity. They looked normal. Normal is a setting on a washing machine. 